The New York Mets have their Jacob DeGrom replacement as they have signed Justin Verlander. In this video, I'm going to react to the Justin Verlander signing, what it means for the Mets, and what else they have to do. There obviously still is more work to be done to get this Mets team to the next level. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like. Comment down below. What are your thoughts on the Justin Verlander signing for the Mets, and what moves would you like to see them make next? And if you're new here, you want to help the channel grow, you can subscribe. It is greatly appreciated if you're subscribed already. Well, you know what to do. Tell a friend, tell a neighbor, tell a stranger, tell a family member Ella snowman i mean whatever it takes to help the channel grow so let's talk about it. i mean obviously justin verlander he's a tremendous pitcher i mean it's pretty obvious we've seen this guy dominate just for so long and he had yet another tremendous season for the houston astros coming off of missing the entire year with the injury having surgery and bouncing back really nicely so that was very nice to see for verlander and he's a guy that you still have a lot of confidence is going to pitch very well but when you're signing a guy that is going to be 40 years old at the start of next season there always is that risk of potential injury so so as long as Justin Verlander is healthy, you know you're going to get a really good pitcher. So as far as the performance aspect, what Jacob deGrom gives you, the Mets have replaced that with Justin Verlander. So they're still going to have two bona fide aces at the top with Verlander and Scherzer. These guys kind of get reunited. They had those years in Detroit. Now they're together in New York. So at least Scherzer still has a buddy with him because I remember Scherzer saying one of the main reasons he signed with the Mets was to help out Jacob deGrom. Well, Obviously, that is the case anymore. So he's going to be reunited with Verlander. And that's just going to be fun to see on a daily basis. You have Justin Verlander pitching one night really well. Then the very next day, you have Max Scherzer pitching. So as a fan during the regular season, that's always fun to see. Again, you really hope that they're healthy. Max had his injuries last year, too. And he's also another year older. So your two aces, they're very good. They're also very old. So there's definitely some pros and cons with it. But you know what? Uh, Justin Verlander, he gets the big bucks. And, and the Mets had to do that once again. Uh, going with these short-term deals where very high AAV, which I think makes sense for a team like this where you have the money. You don't really restrict yourself for the future in case there's other things you want to do. You have that long-term financial flexibility. So the Mets did that once again. The other day when I made my Jacob deGrom video ranting, if you didn't watch that, you could check that out. I didn't understand why the Mets' main reason not getting Jacob deGrom was that whole five-year, six-year thing because they didn't want to pay a pitcher that's 38, 39 years old. Well, they're paying a guy who's 40 by signing Justin Verlander instead. So again, I don't think that's really a consistent thought process. I don't think that's a consistent mindset. But obviously what's done is done. I don't want to spend too much more time complaining about it because at this point we kind of just have to accept it. I still think there's a slight risk involved. I think when it comes down to it, we've seen so many guys come through here and when a guy is good as a Met, you don't want to take that for granted. You really want to capitalize off that. So I feel like the fact that Jacob DeGrom has given you so many really quality seasons, albeit a lot of injuries, I totally get that. But when DeGrom is on the mound, he pitches really well for you. And it doesn't always translate for everybody else when they come to New York and they're the same players. The other reason why I'm still upset is just because Jacob DeGrom was one of our guys. He was a homegrown guy part of the 2015 World Series team. And we've just lost so many of those guys, and whether it's due to injuries or not re-signing them, guys like Zach Wheeler. It's just very sad that none of those guys are here anymore. You know, we had this vision of all these young aces, and now we have none of them. Now we have two old aces that were not on the 2015 roster. So I definitely am excited to see Justin Verlander in New York men's uniform. It's going to be a lot of fun. But obviously, like I said earlier, there still is more work to be done. New York Mets still need a number three pitcher and maybe even a number four or five because we know Carrasco is going to have one of those spots. So you still have two spots left to fill. Uh, the guy that I really like still is Nathan Eovaldi. He's a big game pitcher. He's had a lot of good postseason success, which is something that Justin Verlander has had too. He's had so many postseason runs with the Houston Astros. His postseason this year was a little iffy. Uh, he had a couple of pretty bad starts. He had a couple of pretty good starts, but you feel like for the most part, you feel pretty confident with Justin Verlander on the mound in the big games. So that's really important. But the Mets should make the playoffs once again, and you want guys that have been there and had success. So that's why I would like Eovaldi there at that number three spot. So you'd be in a short series you would have Verlander, Scherzer, Avaldi. If they're not able to get Avaldi, I guess Chris Bass is the next guy up only because once again, since you are going to have two older aces, you're going to need somebody in the middle of the rotation that's an innings eater, that's a durable guy that makes every single start. Chris Bassett did that last year. Again, only missed one star due to illness. Like I said, no, you don't want to take that for granted. I know it did not end well for Bassett. He wasn't good in the playoff game against the Padres. He had his stinker against the Atlanta Braves. But I think for the most part, he really helped the Mets out. He was one of the big reasons why the Mets were able to get above 100 wins this past season. As far as the back end of the rotation, there still are plenty of options for the Mets. Just looking at the list, you have guys like Sean Manaya, Jose Quintana, Jameson Tyone. 
Former Met Taiwan Walker is still out there. Former Met Michael Locke is out there. Like I said in my video off-season preview, that's another video I made this weekend. You can check that out as well. I talked about how Michael Locke is a different pitcher now. Tampa Bay is really able to work with pitchers and get the most out of them and really get them back on the right track. So I feel like they've done that with Michael Locke. So he's a different pitcher now. You also have guys like Andrew Heaney. Uh, former Met Noah Syndergaard. Syndergaard just isn't that guy anymore, so I'm personally not interested in a reunion at this time. And then you can still make some trades. Again, the Mets farm system is very top-heavy, as I've said plenty of times. You're going to hear me say it a lot more. But I don't think they really have that depth to get what it costs to get young, controllable starting pitchers because they just cost so much. Again, maybe the Guardians looking to make a trade one day. Maybe Minnesota wouldn't make a trade. I still think they might move one of those veteran starters because their team just isn't all that good. They haven't done anything big yet. So luckily for the Mets, there still are options available in that starting rotation to get that back end or that middle part of the rotation after your two aces. Obviously, they still need to work on the bullpen. They have Edwin Diaz. That's a great start, but you still need other guys because you don't want to have Justin Verlander or Max Scherzer make a great start and then the bullpen ruins it. So we'll see who they get as the bridge to Diaz. Obviously, there still is a major hole in center field with Brandon Nimmo remaining unsigned. We'll see if they're able to do that because if you give a lot of money to Justin Verlander, it makes it tough to give a lot of money to Brandon Nemo. As of right now, Francisco Alvarez still isn't the starting catcher quite yet, so you still have a bit of a hole there offensively. DH is still a hole offensively to me. I still don't totally love the Mets offense. I still feel that even signing Justin Verlander, he's similar to what the Grom's going to give you. So the Mets, they still have a lot more work to do if they want to be better than they were last year, if they actually want to improve. And it's going to cost a lot of money, but you have the richest owner in baseball. So we'll see how they go about it. I'm very curious to see what they do. And as they make these moves to fill these holes, I will be making more videos. And then I'll also be reacting to other big signings and trades that happen that happen with other teams, not just the Mets. And also, if there are any other sports-related videos, particularly baseball, that you want to see, make sure to leave it down in the comment section below. Make sure you're subscribed to the Mets Weekly channel. And Carson and Andrew, they do a bunch of work during the week. We're going to have a podcast that's going to be every week starting probably in the new year. So a lot to look forward to. Thank you guys for watching. Until the next one, be safe, be smart, be healthy. Let's go Mets. Go get some more pictures.